This is Understand the Times, a radio program dedicated to equipping the church with biblical insights for contemporary issues. As an author and lecturer, Roger Oakland speaks internationally on a wide variety of topics. Roger helps us understand and analyze past events, today's headlines, and even things yet to take place. Now, to help us understand the times, here's Roger. Welcome to uh, today's edition of Understand the Times in the News. Today we're going to try a slightly different format than our previous program. We're going to read a commentary based on current events. Secondly, we're going to deal with various news items that are in the news. And then thirdly, we're going to add to our program some worship songs by some of the worship leaders that we promote and endorse. So we hope this program will not only be interesting, but it will be a blessing to you. Let's begin with the commentary titled, The World and the Church Without God. I'm not a columnist for Wall Street Journal or a writer for the London Times. In fact, I'm really a farmer with a ministry who loves the Lord and has a heart for exposing deception and pointing people to the truth. I only have a degree in biology and have never studied journalism. However, there's one thing I know. The Bible has given me instruction in many areas of life. Common sense is one of them. At the present time, the world is in absolute chaos. No individual or government of any nation knows what to do. Neither does the so-called United Nations able to legislate peace in the world. Countries hate one another. Terrorists cut off heads in the name of God and then promote their activities by what is called the social media. Children are brainwashed and allow suicide bombs to be strapped to their bodies in order to kill kill adults who belong to a different religion. The Pope tells the world that all religions worship the same God. Can someone please stand up with the truth and say what is going on? Without the Bible, none of this makes sense. We live in a fallen world. Satan, the great deceiver, has influenced the affairs of man since the fall of man in the Garden of Eden. If one believes this in today's world, and even in what is called the evangelical church, he's considered to be on the lunatic fringe. Satan has been explained away, and people do not believe God is still on the throne. Man makes a feeble attempt to resolve global problems man's way. Those running for president or other political positions debate endlessly over issues while leaders of countries threaten to wipe out the world with nuclear weapons for the sake of power and greed. Darwinian evolution provides the foundation for Marxist atheism and its cousin, humanism. Public schools and now even Christian colleges and seminaries have bought the lie. Young people have been brainwashed to believe they are no different than brute ape-like creatures, and they play the role. Without God's revelation, to man founded God's word. Society is led by false ideologies and religions that masquerade as the truth. Entire nations are held in darkness. Nations that perhaps started out right end up wrong. History repeats itself over and over. From a biblical perspective, we are living in a period of history that was prophesied thousands of years ago. While the signposts are everywhere, the masses are blind. Professing Christians who say they believe in God are some of the worst offenders and most deceived. They should be able to see what is happening and warn others. Instead, they relegate Bible prophecy to mythology and waste their energy being purpose-driven, or finding ways to get closer to Jesus through Eastern mysticism. When someone sounds the alarm, they are considered by the majority to be the haters, making reference to the pleas of the Old Testament prophets to return to righteousness. Their former colleagues or even church members hurled nasty names at them. Claiming to be God-loving, Bible-believing Christians, they see those who are warning them as the enemy. Receiving the truth is not something they accept. For them, truth is now relative as they've fallen victim to the postmodern ecumenical mindset that all views are acceptable. 
Of course, while claiming that all views are acceptable, there is one view they've rejected. No longer are they obedient to God and God's word. Instead of teaching the word, they tell stories. Instead of warning about hell and the lost eternity, they talk about how you can have whatever you want and be whatever you want to be. These wolves in sheep's clothing are devouring flock after flock. The churches that succeed are no longer churches. Instead, they become entertainment centers for adults, teens, and children. Venues are created to please everyone. One week, there's a petting zoo. The next, an art gallery. Every week, the acid rock bands play, and the people love it so. Hymn books are discarded, along with the doctrines of the Bible they once taught. Now, repetitive choruses repeat phrases over and over, phrases that say nothing about the Bible, but describe the feelings one experiences from singing. So what is the solution? Get back to the Bible. Jesus is coming soon. Well, that's our commentary for this week. What we want to do at this point is to be able to present to you some other news items and then uh, open our program up to a couple of worship songs. First of all, October the 6th, the title, Russian State Newspapers Predict Direct Military Conflict with U.S. Involving a Nuclear Standoff. Quoting from the article, World War III fears have been voiced by Russian newspapers over the growing tensions between the USA and Syria. The newspaper predicts a direct military confrontation on par with the Cuban Missile Crises. The United States suspended contact with Russia over Syria on Monday. Secretary of State John Kerry has been engaged by airstrikes on rebel-controlled areas of Aleppo. Hundreds of innocents are believed to have been killed in the attacks. BBC Russia correspondent Steve Rosenberg referred to two Russian newspapers taking an aggressive tone towards the USA. Now, as I read these headings, and I've been looking at these newspapers almost daily, news items that are coming from around the world from various countries, there's obviously a focus in the Middle East, a crisis situation in which we're being warned that a nuclear war is at the brink. Most people maybe don't realize this, and maybe most people don't care. But the fact is, this is what we are facing. What's even more tragic that, well, as we listen to the U.S. presidential candidates, not one of them brings these important subjects up to the public. The following story, taken October the 2nd, titled The Winged Bull of Nimrod, and part of the Temple of Baal are being displayed in the Colosseum in Rome, uh, is extremely interesting reading. Quoting from the article, If you thought having the harbinger of Baal in New York City was bad, wait until you hear what they are doing in Rome. A reproduction of a winged bull from the ancient city of Nimrod, Iraq, and a creation of part of the ceiling from the Temple of Baal, are being put on display in the Colosseum in Rome, Italy. This exhibit has been entitled Rising from the Ashes, Ibla, Nimrod, Palmyra. It's been sponsored by UNESCO. The author continues, The statue of the winged bull from Nimrod in the Temple of Baal both have direct links to ancient Babylon and a very insidious character from the Bible known as Nimrod. Symbiosis having meaning and to have these symbols erected at one of the most famous landmarks in Rome is more than just a little bit disturbing. So what is this about? Well, this article makes for interesting reading. It's based on the facts showing that the present connection of Rome with Babylon. However, the fact is there's always been a connection with Rome and Babylon in many ways. Most importantly, worship practices that are deemed to be Christian. Anyone that has ever taken a trip to Rome will see the Babylonian connections. Further, the author mentions a future connection with regards to a coming Antichrist in this article that can also well be documented. What the author of the article does not mention 
is the role that Mary plays in the connection between Rome and Babylon. This is even more important, and it will be the topic of a program in the future. This article is almost too unbelievable to believe, but nevertheless, on October the 11th, the title of the article, UNESCO to vote on resolutions ignoring Jewish ties to Temple Mount. Quoting from the article, UNESCO is slated to vote twice this month on Palestinian initiatives that ignore Jewish sites to its most holy religious site of the Temple in the Western Wall in Jerusalem. The first of these votes will be Thursday or Friday of this week by 58-member executive board, the nations of executive scientific and cultural organization in Paris. In the vote, Israel's mission to UNESCO in Paris has given board members, international diplomats, a brochure detailing the deep historic ties of Judaism as to those sites which are also holy to Christianity. These facts and evidences will leave no doubt and without the, any connection of other religions to the holy places in Jerusalem, the longest Jewish present in Jerusalem since ancient times. Now what is this about? Israelites are having to defend the reality that the holy temple is actually a Jewish location. This is impossible to believe. The fact that Israel has to defend its right to ownership of the Temple Mount to UNESCO is absolutely ludicrous. This also shows how lopsided the powers that be are in favoring the Palestinian takeover of Israel based on a false premise that completely contradicts history. Christians should be outraged, but many of them are behind this 
gradual takeover of Israel by hostile nations. Another term, it's called replacement theology.
Many have been wondering what is happening in the world today with regards to rules, regulations associated with supposed climate change. This article, dated October the 6th, 2016, is titled Habitat 3 Thumbscrews. Urban plan aims to reduce water power use by half. This is what the article states. The technocrats at the United Nations fully intend to reshape 100% of the world's cities and towns, cut water and power usage in half, and force public transit to 60%. Worse, most of the leaders of the world nations are fully on board with the plan. India's future strategy for urban development intends to tap into the potential of rapid urbanization for economic development, while at the same time address, addressing issues of sustainable development and climate change, announced housing and urban pro poverty alleviation minister Nadu. Nadu released the Indian Habitat 3 National Report on the World Habitat Day, October the 3rd, 2016, the head of the UN Habitat 3 conference in Quito, Ecuador last month, where a new global urban agenda for the next 20 years will be adopted. The challenge is about ensuring sustainable development while taking advantage of economic growth and results from rapid urbanization in the country for long urbanization has been looked at from limited perspective of providing basic services. We need to go for a big push to harness the full potential of urbanization. Now let's look further into this article because it really reveals where this is headed. Stating that cities need to be made efficient, productive, inclusive, safe, and sustainable, said the agenda for the next two decades proposed in the national report will be ensuring economic growth and productivity, improving quality of life, addressing issues of inclusivity, sustainability, and climate change. The minister said that the outcomes of the new urban agenda based on sustainable urban planning would include reducing water and electricity use by 50% from that of normal use, enabling over 60% of urban travel by public transport. So what's going to happen worldwide? You're going to see that governments, that is local governments, are going to come under the control of a global government monitoring and controlling absolutely everything that is done, said, put in your mouth. This is going to be regulation beyond anything that's ever happened to the point the entire planet is going to be re regulated and as it goes eventually one world leader will result. If you thought government regulations were controlling your life now, you haven't seen anything yet. Fasten your seatbelt. Now the new global world order will control every move you make. Control the food you eat, the air you breathe, and if you thought you lived in a democratic environment, then think again. The world is being set up and people like it so. Very few seem to be resisting. Now, genetic engineering is always an interesting item in the news. Uh, here's an item October the 5th. Americans aren't enthused about genetic engineering. Quoting from the article. It was reported last week that a baby with genetic material from three people was born several months ago thanks to the success of the controversial new procedure. Few Americans support the idea of so-called three-parent babies or even more opposed to genetic engineering that allows parents to choose specific characteristics for their children before they are born. So common sense reality shows that genetic engineering leads to a biological disaster. Why then are we being driven by multinational corporations and big money to control life by manipulating genetic information? What wisdom do humans have that is greater than God's wisdom to perform these, well, well, they're not experiments. This has become reality. Can humans do anything about experimenting with life? Or is this the same old lie that Satan has always used to inspire mankind to attempt to deify himself? So my question is, will this bring judgment? 
The answer, yes. And the final news item of this program is titled Iranian Theme Park Teaches Children War Tactics, quoting from the article. Iran opened a military theme park this week designed to teach children as young as eight years old how to fight in a war and fire weapons at its perceived Western enemies. Located in the western suburb of the city of Mashhad, the Park of the Revolution's Children, marks Sacred Defense Week, an annual commemoration of the Iran-Iraq War of the 1980s, according to a park brochure. The participant children are trained in shooting virtual fixed and moving targets, including moving objects decorated with the U.S. and Israeli flag. Hamad Sadegai, the managing director of Children and Future Cultural House, which supervises activities of this park, told the Rahaj News, a photo essay released in the state-run Iranian agency, children of the park are pictured carrying weapons in field drills, navigating an obstacle course, and gathering around bonfires while wearing military apparel similar to Revolutionary Guard uniforms. The children learn how to defend a sacred monument that resembles a Shiite holy site in Damascus that Iran says is protecting in a serious civil war. According to this typical propaganda, well, Islam is supposed to be a religion of peace. Why then would Iran, a country who has vowed to wipe out the Jews, train children for war? Why would countries of the world, including Russia and the USA, support Iran in their efforts to potentially manufacture and arm themselves with nuclear arms? Has the world lost touch with reality? It looks to me like planet Earth is in a big trouble. Please visit www.understandthetimes.org for more information, to order materials, or to contact the ministry. Sign up for our free newsletter, news alerts, and commentaries. You can also contact us by telephone toll-free at 1-800-689-1888. That's 1-800-689-1888.